guys? What's going on? I am the one, the only, the W-O-O-K-I-E, joined here by the wonderful cast. What's going on, guys? We got, uh, let's see, who do we got here? We got Z here. Hi, Z. Yep. We, uh, ready to talk some expectations. Fun stuff. We have JR, a.k.a. Ewok here. What's going on, Hello, JR? Hello, Keyforge community and our Patreon members. Thank you. And Dan. Yeah. Yeah, Dan's here, as usual. Dan's here. So, I don't know. I might just uh, throw this up on the regular and just push back. um, Because the other episode is what uh, we call kind of an evergreen episode. It kind of can be posted whenever. So, uh, this one, I don't know. It's kind of, what do we say? It's more time sensitive due to, obviously, MM just being released and all that fun stuff. Yeah, we're playing MM. They want to know some feedback. I finally got to play some inline game. Real life games and some online, for that matter. Actually. Some some Earl, some IRL. Yeah, yeah. So Earl. what do you guys what do you guys think of thus far? Uh, Dan and uh, Jr. I know you guys got to, you met up with one of our friends, Dan. Uh, not Dan, but uh, John, um, and played some MM. And you, you, Z, obviously, he says he's been playing it too now. So what are what are our first thoughts on on MM? This, in my opinion, is the most fun set that I've had experience playing. I, I love playing every game that I've played. I uh, get to see some really interesting mechanics that are super swingy sometimes. Like, uh, in multiple games that I've played in so far, I'd be like looking at the board. It's like, I'm getting crushed. I'm going to lose. Should I just concede right here? I don't do that, of course. And then, like, two turns later, it's like, it's the exact opposite. Like, I'm winning. I look across the board. My opponent has nothing. I was like, wow, I'm not sure exactly how this just happened, but here we are. Uh, and that's fun. It's real fun. So you're digging you're digging the swinginess of it. Yeah, I'm I'm digging that I don't like after that happened a couple of times, I really don't ever feel like I'm out of the game. Um which definitely happened a lot when I was playing AOA. Like if you had a like some decks I always felt like I had a chance to come back in Coda. Um, I did generally feel like once I got behind, I was probably gonna lose in World Collide. But in AOA, if I was behind, like there, you just lost. <laughs> like, it's there was no cool. coming back. <laughs> no. Yeah, not uh, unless you have Martian Generosity Key Abduction. Yeah, yeah, unless you have the one top tier combo out of the set, you're just okay. Good kid. <laughs> Jr. Dan, what, what did you guys find? I know you guys. Unfortunately, I was out of town this weekend or this weekend this week. Um, with the fam for for the the girl's birthday, turning Big ten, birthday. but uh, that was kind of a, a bizarre situation in Wisconsin Dells. Uh, but what did you guys think? I thought all the games were a lot of fun, but they can go real long, real real long. Yeah, I, honestly, the first piece that jumped out, I agree with Z, is fun. Uh, fun playing against my wife, Tara. Fun against playing against Dan. All the real, the in real life games, they're awesome. Uh, there are some super, super grindy games that we've got into, depending on what houses. Um, and that's what we were talking a little bit about before here. Outside of that, though, I, I love the enhancements. I love. They're not great, but even some of the giant creatures. I had a double giant creature deck that I faced against sheep on Tuesday. It's just fun. So I, I'm really enjoying the enhancements, even searching for some of, okay, what special enhancements do you have on what card? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's making the game you know, want to crack a few more decks, open those decks, and then actually just playing them. I'm really enjoying it. I was looking at a, uh, speaking of cracking decks, I was looking at a, I think it was on a Keyforge Facebook page, a, a post for uh, there was some sort of like weird conspiracy. I'm going to, I got my air fingers up conspiracy theory that the only reason they, they put the, it yep. about the put, the only reason they put extra pips on them is so that you'd have to open them to find out what they were, which is going to make you want to sleeve cards, which is going to make you buy more game genics, which is going to just because we all know game genics is owned by. Um, yeah. Asmo, As, Asmodee, right? They're the parent yeah. company, so I, I found that kind of interesting uh, because I actually just unsleeved a bunch of decks and, and threw them into the burger token boxes, which coincidentally are now all... Are they still sold out? Uh, they've been sold out a lot, so... Yeah, it, I mean... If, Bur- if you Bur- find burger them, token I is 
Yeah, they're sitting in a great spot. I will say for all of those cheapos out here, uh, you can join me. What I found is I take a scissors, cut off the very top of the box, um, kind of where the take where it would hang from. I go ahead and cross off with a sharpie the three houses that are there, and then I'm writing either the deck name or the sass um, right on the top, and then I can throw the deck literally right back in the box. You write the sass on the deck. Doesn't that change every day? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what like, what, what's there. But uh, the next month it will be. <laughs> couple times a day. I didn't say that. No couple one, couple no, times a no day. Tell Nathan I said that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I will edit that piece out. No. But, <laughs> but for those who are, you know, trying to go ahead and go, oh, goodness, I don't have all these sleeves. It's a nice way. The box keeps it pretty compact. Mm-hmm. Um, you can actually, if you take a knife and slits the plastic, you can actually pull out the cards, look at it, and then you can slide it back in the plastic, then back in the box. And it's easy enough to find what the houses are and then what uh, the title is. Um, depends just how much time you want to put into writing out the Art, title. Arts and crafts with JR. Hey, I'm a teacher, man. That's, That's we. True. I don't make much money, but I got to go ahead and extend that into it being efficient. So I, it, yeah, it's working I'm for right me. There with you. JR's got that weird, that, that sticky tape that you got to lick the back of and then you put it down. <laughs> Anybody remember that stuff? No. What? I'm the only one who remembers. It was like two inch thick log, like tape looking stuff. I think you're the only one who licks things. Yeah, probably. Did, did it have? Did it leave a lasting impact, Bucky? When you licked this thing? <laughs> just you know, oh. I made it out of I made it out of grade school. Okay, it's just the one tick that happens every now and again. That's yeah. just you know, I mean, you, he's, you he's the kid with eating glue left and right. Don't worry. Yeah, you learn to you learn to live with that. So I use uh, they're called team bags. Um. There are these little resealable poly bags that they make for putting team sets of sports cards in. You can get like 400 of them for $15 on the Amazon. Uh, and I think they, that's exactly what I used to. Yeah, they work great. Uh, ben the Monkey, he he had some of them, gave me some, and I immediately went out and bought a bunch myself. They they work pretty good. They're very easy to carry with you, too. Um, and then you can see the deck list just by grabbing it. Yeah. So I like that quite a lot. So, I mean, we kind of went through, I mean, you guys said you guys are having a ton of fun with the set. What are some of the things that you're just enjoying the most? Is it that we're getting back to IRL play? Or what do you, I mean, tell, tell me. Your, your... I think the thing I'm enjoying the most is, is the enhancements. The fact that, like, when you open a deck, you have these truly unique things that you might not ever see again. Like, to the point where it's probably unlikely there will be another card like that. Uh, I was playing a deck today. I don't know if it was online or in real life. I think it was in real life. Um, it was uh, Master the Theory. It's not a good card to even have what's on here, but it's just the fact that it's on there is crazy. Uh, it has an amber, a capture, a damage, and a draw on the card. And it's just like, okay, obviously, if you get it, ever get its archive effect, the capture is useless. But the fact that you have this card that might not ever exist in any other deck ever is really really cool and that same deck has um all right fission bloom so if i fission bloom into that card it is gain two amber do two damage capture two uh and draw two that's amazing <laughs> like that is ridiculously fun yeah and in case uh, you guys aren't familiar master of theory uh is coming out as a rare it actually was reprinted <laughs> it's been in three sets picture that it's got an amber pip on it play uh action effect if there are no friendly creatures in play you may archive a card for each enemy creature yeah so if you ever play it to that effect you can't get the capture that's on it but i just play it as a card now because it is way better as you know do one of everything um, in that same deck, I have Cronus. So if Cronus is in play, when I play that card, I actually get to do all four things and then archive a card. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's so good. So fun. Yeah, Niffleapes are good in this if set. you have the Super Warden. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've gotten out. now, I mean, I have a couple decks. Niffleapes seem to come with the Queen. Like, I don't think I have any decks. I, don't, I have to go look again, but... Again, very small sample size, but all the decks I have with Niffles also come with the Niffle Queen, which <laughs> I thought was kind of interesting. It might just be my luck. I've seen some decks without the Queen. Okay. That's your luck. It's just yeah, my luck. luck. I get the that's Queen, too. But all my Niffles uh, in the one deck are enhanced, which makes playing Niffle Apes not so, uh, not so painful anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, if you can get the Niffles and a Nifflecon deck and all of them are enhanced, you could create a really big turn. I think that's the only scenario where I would want Nifflecon. I have played uh, a deck with each of the big creatures uh, at this point, and the only one that I was severely disappointed in is the Nifflecon. Um, he just doesn't do nearly as much as the other two do. Because when the other two, when you play the other two, you drastically affect the game. <laughs> And they have to address them going forward, too. You play Nifflecong, not a whole lot changes, and they don't really have to address them that bad. You, you like facing those giants, don't you, Dan? Oh, yeah, that was great. As I say, I was watching Mortavis play around with his Nifflecong deck, which has enhanced Niffles and then Resurgence. Mm. So, yep. and Resurgence lets you pull back a whole, a whole Niffle Kong into your and hand. So, and all of the Niffles. And then, yes, and then all the Niffles come back around. So it makes them. With them enhanced, like, so there is some Niffle Kong synergy, but yes, without something else to make it. Yeah, like, if you get enhances and there. resurgence, Niffle Kong can do a lot to affect the game, but, like, if if you don't have, that's a lot of ifs, right, for that to happen. But if, I, if I'm just picking, okay. the, like, Deus will always capture all of your Amber. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Niffle Kong, if you don't fire him early... He's yeah, not he's going to close a game for you unless your Niffles are all piled up with capture on yeah. some dream. But yes, he's you gotta get him early and he's more of a bursting card than uh Yeah. And like Ultra and Deus that. are like polar opposites. Ultra doesn't do that much late game. Deus doesn't do hardly anything early game. Uh although he still can wreck their entire battle line the whole game. So Deus I think in my opinion is the best one of them by far. Um I think there are certain combos with Ultra Graviton that can make a great deck. Um, but again, if you don't get them early, it is less great. But yeah, I can say that Alter Graviton middle game is it's still putting a ton in the archives, even late, to be able to have that piece where you're putting five into your archive. Um my logo suite that goes with it also has um what's the card, the action card that goes ahead and you put two in archive right away. Uh a clock yeah. yeah, that I mean, so when you're cycling some of those uh, there was a point where I had a third of my deck just in. Yeah. Um, conveniently, Dan went ahead and yeah, lost you know what feels really bad. Yeah, <laughs> is hand bouncing at Ultra Gravitron. Mm-hmm. Feel, feels real bad. Yep. Yep. Don't want to do it. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta. I don't know. Do you? You can always. Well, actually, I lost in the woods to it, but it happened to be that he went down to zero cards in his deck when I had to do it, so wow, he wow. Uh, he just drew them right back, both of them, the next turn. It was great. <laughs> it was awful. And I had both uh, Ducillus and Gravitron out, so those were the bottom four cards, and I had four uh, Star Alliance cards I could cycle out the next turn and just draw them, so yeah, it's it's fun. I, that, there's the whole fun component we were talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so, you know, like, I know we're going to talk about combos here in a second, but one of the things we mentioned on the cast was that uh, we had a huge drop in scaling Amber Control. I do want to come back and say I don't think it was as drastic as we originally thought um, because I don't know if we really factored in because like, now that we're talking about these big creatures, the big thing was, are they playable? I think after playing the games, I, I played about 10 games with them, either with or against them. Uh, they come out. They they came out in almost every game, so I think they're all are playable. So with them as a playable, true to form creature, Deus is a legit top in amber amber capture. Um. So on top of that, I don't think we gave Anthony as much credit as I mean we talked about him being great. He is as great as we all talked about. Oh no, Anthony's yeah. real real good. Yeah. <laughs> so with Deus, Anthony, and Envy. And bring low. I think there are actually effervescent principles still out there. And principle is back. It wasn't for a while. City, city, whatever. City state interest city is still there. And spoils also does almost as much as city state, sometimes more. Um, yep. And there's so much incidental capture. Yeah, like as far. I mean, well, that's not scaling though. But as far as right. city state and spoils, and then. Those three that will capture everything, Envy, Anthony, and Deus, that's that's the scaling that people are talking about. I think in total, yes, too much protect is not there. 
But I think there is more than we originally assumed because we were kind of factoring out Deus because we didn't know if that would be playable all, all the time. I think he is playable in a lot of the decks you're going to find him. He no. re- it really hurts, though, when you put him out and then it's just a simple standardized testing or gateway. There's still a lot to go ahead and wipe. Um, you don't have as much option here in Mass Mutations, um, so they can stick around. Oh, but I'm curious. That's true. But like, like if you're talking about top-level competitive deck in that same mm-hmm. deck that I have Deus, I should sure as, sure as heck hope I also have Ludo. I know so I got I got double a little bit harder to address your day. Yeah. Like oh, I just captured all your amber. You're gonna kill him now. Actually, what what I keep running in that double giant uh, deck is I end up with a little Star Alliance uh, droid who's a four taunt. Um, yeah, uh, secure bot. Yeah, so it's Gravitron on one side, secure bot, and then it's Deus on the, <laughs> the right. And so That's you gotta hilarious. go. It, it, oh, it is absolutely hilarious. Um, but then you can go ahead in the next turn. It does have double Ludo, so you're, you know, if you can throw it out, great. Um, but Ludo is a huge target there. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, regardless of what happens, it's a lot of fun. And it keeps them off check, and it, it changes the game. Mm-hmm. Well, and then so, again, they have to address it. Like, there's some decks that have, like, some decks that were pretty good in Coda had a lot of, the most coded, yes, they're Rocking Gateway or whatever, but there are a lot of decks that have just a lot of damage. <laughs> A lot of damage is not going to deal with Deus. Like, nope. It's just not. Right. <laughs> so what are the well, things you, that you were... asked? You asked what we're enjoying. I would put out this shout out to Call of Discovery. I'm enjoying just discovering the decks. So in discovering those enhancements, discovering what the decks do. And I'll, I'll not anything. I, I really appreciate everything that Nathan and the whole group for SAS is doing. But some of my numbers are not necessarily matching up with just the fun factor and the competitive. I think it will level out once things get figured out, but I'm enjoying just discovering, hey, what's this deck and what's it do? Yeah, so I got my my little thing. So we, we were talking about this, like one of the things I like best here is what seems to be the consistency in the decks. So, I mean, my little fun with numbers here, all these numbers are maybe plus or minus one. When you look at SAS, which we all agree isn't perfect, but it's a pretty good indicator. When you look at mass mutation right now, the bell curve is only 24 SAS units wide, right? When the average is at 66. When you compare that to Worlds Collide, that is 40 units wide. Like, it is significantly wider. So, like, bottom end mass mutation is 55, and top end is right around 80. I mean, there's some deep you know, uh, trailers after that where Worlds Collide goes from 45 to 84 as yeah. visible numbers of decks. So the spread in decks in there yeah. is huge. And then the that, average man. and the average is 63. And and then why I think another reason we say AOA was one of the better sealed sets is although its average SAS is 58 because Nathan hates it, um, its spread was only 30 units. So it was a pretty tight bell curve set there. And Coda is like a 62 average with 35 units wide. So it's pretty stretched out there, too. We you know, like the disparity or the disparity in decks is real high. And this set is is much tighter. And out of like the 48 decks I opened, I only got one with under five Amber Control, which was just, you know, all the time in AOA and often in Worlds Collide where you're just like, I have no Amber Control in this deck, like literally one or two. And it's just not viable at all. I don't, I don't think there are much better than decks than I did. Maybe I need to buy another box. I don't know. I mean, I I I, I evaluated for um, someone that listens to the show uh, four hundred and thirty something decks. Most of them have decent amber control, and that's a lot of decks to go through. Um, yes, there are some that was fairly like as far as the logos, but I mean nothing anywhere close to how low I got to see several decks open. Um, in AOA. Like, I have been to sealed events where I would open three AOA, AOA decks and get nothing that control Amber at any level that I would feel adequate to play this game. Um, I would be utterly shocked if I opened three decks and got a similar result in MM because that's just not what I'm seeing. In fact, I'm seeing some Amber control, some decks that can ha- handle more Amber control than I've ever seen before. That's saying a lot. Like, f- Quad routine chops exist. Like there's a lot of 
decks out there across all three sets that can crush a lot of amber. And I'm seeing decks come out of MM that could beat all of them in that one metric, hands down. Will they beat some of those other decks? No, because of other things going on. But uh, this might be one of the things that y'all were alluding to. Like that might be why some of those games were going on longer because uh, Sorian combined with Sanctum, they can capture and crush all of your ember uh, continuously for a long time. So, is that what you were seeing as far as some of the games going longer? Yes, hands down. Um, even some of the monuments, when I have multiple um, dinos that will go ahead and capture two, I'm trying to think of who that is offhand. It just it it was crazy to see how much uh, you can go ahead and pull. You're pulling back. I had three of them that were in uh, Cor- Cornison Octavia, and then the Monument to Octavia. And because I had three in the one deck, two of them are out, ones in discard. I could action for capturing four plus another two that was there for the one in the discard on the monument. I mean, six capture on a turn is nothing to mm-hmm. sneeze at. It just is yeah. nothing to sneeze at. So. They put a lot of amber out, and honestly, the decks that are playing, because we're just messing around, they didn't have big, giant board wipes. So that has become more of a piece in my mind of, okay, what do we have for board wipes to go ahead and clear some of these creatures out? I think that uh, from just playing with my family here has become like it was forefront to my mind and my attention when I was playing. Um, board wipes are just as important, if not somehow more important, uh, than than when they were way the, more important like then worlds collide because like yep. worlds collide you cannot go up against the top tier worlds collide deck and not have board wipes or you're gonna lose <laughs> like there's just no way um and i think the same thing's holding true here like even the decks that like we talked about like building a logos board and like doing crazy stuff with them i've seen it it happens like it, there there's some lines where you have these six logos creatures you get to come back to Logos, your advantage for the rest of the game is going to be huge. <laughs> and they have to address it. Um, it's it's really interesting. Like I've seen, there are several decks out there with triple triple Professor Torato. You land them. If they don't answer it right there, that's three, four powered creatures. Like you're going to win the game because you're about to reap for nine cards, three amber, and there's very little coming back from that kind of deficit, just card draw wise. And that's hard to address. Three creatures with four power unless you have a board wipe. So that is a hugely critical piece. So what are some things, I mean, I don't want to get to the negative too, but there's some negatives for this set. What are some problems we foresee in the future? Like, what are some problems we're going to see? Like, obviously, I think we, we've identified, like, yeah, the set, what the set does well. What does it not do well? Like, where is it going to struggle? Because I'm not going to lie to you. I played this game versus, you know, I played Keyforge. I gave, you know, I played the the new deck, and I gave my wife, uh, you know, one of my top Coda decks. And uh, Coda Smash, like, Coda did not care about what was going on. Uh, with all these extra ember pips. Yeah, it, it slowed it down, but it just said, mm, nah, and just kept trucking through, especially with, like you said, no scaling steel, no stuff like that. Like, in a deck that wants to run, basically you can go, okay. MM, well, if you gave her Bear Blossom and you're playing a random mass mutation deck, yeah, yeah I, you, I, you know, I, that's... I, well, I mean, there was more than one game that happened. But, I mean, I was playing with, with the top, what Sass would call the top, uh, top tier of my what I opened for my MM. See, I, I think that's the difference. Right now, I did the same with Tara, my wife. I gave her some of the better top SAS rated decks, and honestly, they did not have the board presence. And my lower SAS decks that I grabbed, which had Sanctum and Saurian, um, again, we rated them way lower. They could really control the Amber. The Amber control was much higher on those pieces and they controlled board and just wiped it now they dragged the game on i mean honestly we've seen games that have gone well past the 45 50 minutes and that i could see as a little bit of a problem in a sealed environment outside of that the game is so much fun with these enhancements with the decks 
Um, but I, I do worry about some of the house combinations dragging the game on. And honestly, I don't think SAS has worked out right now. So I wouldn't put, while it has some great pieces, I wouldn't put that all in of, oh, she had the top SAS, so let's run that against Coda. I would honestly run, like, play some of the different games with Key, and then run what you think is, you know, a great deck against Bear Blossom or against your Coda deck and, and, and kind of run it that way and see what's happening. I've seen and played some decks that I believe could make it today to day two out of vault against Coda, Coda Prime, like the best Coda that we know of. But like I don't like I haven't out of the four hundred and thirty decks that I looked at, and then some of the ones I've just perused online, none of those are in that. The ones I'm talking about are purely like I've I've found them online, right? In the in the database. I can look on DOK for decks. Um, so I, they are being, I, I think competitive decks are being generated. Um, but as, as Ewok just said, it's hard to tell what's what, because yes, I can look at through decks online. I can look through DOK, but obviously it's sorted by SAS or whatever filter or sorted I'm putting on there. And right now it's hard to tell what's truly competitive. Cause like one of the things, like one of the top tier combos I think can happen is Sori and Sanctum to the point where you can use the Curia artifact. That's the one every time your creature dies, any creature dies, one amber moves to the opposing side. Um, in the right combination with combined with Sanctum, you can constantly take all of their amber, kill all the creatures, and then cap like you get all of the amber on your dudes. Like that is easily established in many decks because Curia is uncommon, Fierce Way isn't uncommon. And the entire rest of your house is captured. That's all the two houses do. Like or or exalt, which is capture exalt. Fine yeah, too. Way, yep. You're just gonna end up getting a ton of amber. And that does it to the point where I mean, like, that causes problems for Coda because you're generating amber and to some extent you're necessarily not even caring if your creatures live. Because so of the just, way Curia is working. Uh, on the SAS score which was a problem in early Worlds Collide 2, one of the core kind of bits in SAS, right, is the numbers are based off of, like, one and a half uses out of things, just as a rough number. Mm -hmm. And definitely, as we're playing random decks that we're just opening, you often establish a board and use it many more times than one and a half. So SAS does not represent huge board state as well as turn cards, right? That's just... It's just how it is. And if you're playing against Top Coda that has tons of board wipe stuff, it's it's probably fairly accurate. But when you start playing MM on MM and you're both trying to play big board, the SAS, the higher SAS deck is designed to deal with Coda low creature count kind of settings. Mm -hmm. In truth, I mean, that's just where SAS is tuned right now a little more. So it's you can't just go, this is my highest deck, it's going to be the best, especially when you're playing against other mass mutation decks. you got to plan to be duking it out on the board. At least I think that's that's how my games have been going. Now, are you sure. talking yeah. MM v MM or MM v yeah. Coda? MM v anything, which is why if you... Uh, so the lower SAS MM decks are really good against other MM decks, but they may not stand up to Coda because Coda just wipes them off the board keeps you know like a lot of good Coda decks just have so much C in them that I don't care if you play five creatures a turn I just keep putting them all back right and, that, and that's the big thing is you know like you guys know Bear Blossom it's got a lot of damage in it it's got a lot of return it's got a lot of things so um, it did not struggle with I have big board or I'm attempting to make big board. It, it, it handled it quite well. Um, I don't know if maybe that's just good. Like, hey, good bear blossoms maybe goes up a tick or two because the last couple. I mean, it took a mighty big hit the last couple updates that uh, that Nathan did. Like, it used to be pretty high up there. Uh, wasn't was it 78 or 79? And then all of a sudden now it's down to like 72 or something like that. So, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be that I'll, I'll be that person from online. It's the deck. The deck hasn't changed at all. You know that deck very well. Right. Um. And and so it's 
it's trying to put a metric on something that's really hard to judge. And let's be very honest about that. If I had tried to do this, man, this would be <laughs> exponentially worse. Yeah. So I have yeah. I have to give them credit for that. And, and the, there is a group that is kind of working together behind the scenes, trying to be able to make this a little bit more efficient. So it's not just one person, but realize that it's still something that is not 100% accurate. So, so many people put it in, oh, this is what the score means. No, tr- trust yourself, go play through the deck. And, and I think that's exactly that call discovery of discover your decks, have fun with it, go for it. Well, and especially at this point, like, I'm like, because we don't know where the enhancements are, all of those are coded for just what the enhancement could do in a vacuum. Yep. Um, basically all the SAS scores that you see on DOK right now are a relative minimum for most decks. There are like a, a 10, like 10% of the decks will actually get worse because they're like their enhancements land somewhere bad. Oh my capture gateway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like that happens and that could be bad, but like 90% of the decks should go up a little bit to a lot. Once we know where those are, because like that example that I had where I had the uh, master the theory or whatever it is, it has like all those four things on it. But that gets a lot better when you factor in that I have Kronos in that house. I have Bloom in that house, because if I Bloom that, that doubles all the icons. If I Kronos the, the draw, then I'm archiving too as well. Like that is a huge turn just by playing one card. Like... And right now, Sass can't see that at all. Has no way to see it. So, I mean, like, that deck alone, the, the Sass will go up significantly if sat, like if there is a way to see where the answer is. Has Nathan thought about allowing people to, you know, obviously put their own things on, like, okay, so, for, for instance, like, I have a deck. Here's where the enhance like it knows what enhancements I have, obviously due to the cards. Has he thought about allowing people to put the enhancements on their card and allowing SAS to uh, adjust either way, depending on where it went? Last time I checked, he is holding out to see if they're going to add it to the database, especially since they did reference uh, looking into it recently on their cast. Um, and was, once we right. he gets a final answer on that, uh, he will. Maybe move towards something. Uh, I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that. I mean, I mean let's, they, they let's... themselves referenced it. Not I, I know them. they themselves referenced it, but putting it in the if I, I wouldn't hold my breath on it. I mean, let's be honest. Let's, I'm optimistic. I'm gonna sit here and be honest with you. You guys know that Dexa Keyforge is something that Keyforge itself. But uh, that's that's didn't not. Want. There has been many many other calls, not just Nathan's letter there have been several other calls they've clearly got the message there they said their own op team wants it gives me promise that it's gonna happen i would say 50 50 at this point i don't well, know that's right it's a good I'm thing i'm lucky so uh, it's gonna nathan happen is waiting that's the answer to the question so Nathan's <laughs> waiting. Okay, so Nathan's waiting to see. Because I was just wondering, you know, you can you can plug. I mean, uh, we're doing it on Crucible right now, you know, where we kind of got to plug in our own our own stuff. You know, the yeah. deck's not. You know, I, I, it's just kind of a weird situation I, that we're sitting. I in right sure now. would. I mean, he did add the ability now on Dex Key Forge. You can add a picture of cards from your deck, so you can show people where the icons are. And okay. sellers are doing that, and I appreciate that they're doing that. I think. I don't, if I were Nathan, I don't know if I would open that. I don't, like... There's obviously I'm benefits a lawyer, and... i a legal person. I think that would create possibilities for there to be, like, fraudulent decks and people selling them because of where the enhancements are. Right. I don't think Nathan would be liability, like, liable for that. No, I mean, he puts all but over his website that you're, that you're buying at your own risk. You know, so, I mean, there's there's, there's that, I just obviously. wouldn't want to be the person that was running the site at that point. When it would be that easy to manipulate value of something perceived. Mm. Yeah, no, I just I I'm not sure what to do. Like you said, we're we're sitting here waiting, you know, and then they say, Well, you know, hey, we we wanna know. And you know, oh well that we want, you know, we've been waiting for online keyforge for you know, an actual legitimate online keyforge for how long? 
Um, people, I mean, the only reason I get really not optimistic is how much stuff were we waiting for from FFG that they said they would look into since, like, the dawn of this game? You mean, are, would you like to now complain about your missing Amber Shards from your store championship? Oh, I wasn't even going to do that. But now that you bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> how about Vault Warrior? How about Vault Warrior? How about hey, Shay? All right, right let's, let's, let's move on. Move on. No, no. Today's MM Day. Yeah, MM. Yeah. And we are all happy. This is a great, exciting Power day. combos, right? We wanted to talk about power combos. Power combos. Go ahead, guys. Vault what are some power combos you're talking Moving on. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of people were hyped. Like, I'm going to go ahead and, like, I think the most powerful combo that could win a game actually does come from the Sins. And it's not greed, and it's not sloth. I know a lot of people were like super amped about those two sins. I still like them. They're good, but I think essence scale plus envy slash gluttony as a as a team is ridiculously op and can challenge Coda any day. Um, as soon as you land envy and gluttony, your opponent has to address it, or you take all of their amber from them with envy. And then you move it all to your pool with Gluttony. And on top of that, if Essence Scale is already online at the start of your turn, the turn you land Gluttony, you move all of the Amber to your pool so you're not even vulnerable as far as the Exalted Amber. Like, I've seen that. I've played it. It is devastatingly powerful. Um, with the right support with from your from a Logos house that can archive fast enough to get your combo online and or Grim Reminder in deck to bring your combo back online, Essence scale with those two sins is super broken. And yes, Wrath would be a nice bonus to help taunt away from them so that they have to address a little bit harder. But even the um the other one, the big the big taunter, the six two, I think his name is Sin something, which is perfect. Cinder. Cinder. You need Cinder for your to protect your sins. It makes it's it's all lined up there. It's really well done. But envy and gluttony, in my opinion, is a a top level combo will create decks that are real hard for any set to address effectively if you have essence scale. And the main reason being they can't stop you from gluttoning the turn you play him. Um, there's also some combo stuff with Fandango, but I really didn't want to go out of house too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, F- Fandango can make things even more broken, uh, especially if you get them in like triplicate where they have to constantly address the combo coming out online immediately. Um, but yeah, envy, gluttony, and anything that can possibly make them fire on the turn they come in is devastatingly powerful. Uh, thoughts on that or? You know, I, I agree. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have much left to say out of that. Is I, I agree. I fire. agree. <laughs> It is, but I agree a hundred percent. And I'm more on the lines of Fandango plus Gluttony and Envy. Uh, you know, two different houses. But to yeah. know that you can do it in one house is just I, twisted. It's good, yeah, and cycle I, it I, with I, the, your Grim Reminder. Yeah, like you're spurring I, I, great. Like, I, I, and that's not that's not a big ask because we talk about like what does it take to get certain things. It is not actually that big of an ask for the system to generate deck because there's already plenty out there that have Gluttony, Envy, Grim Reminder, and Essence Scale. They are there. They already exist. Um, so the way the decks are being sold, the way they're getting registered, you're going to get some really good versions of this. Um, and then, yeah, if you happen to have Fandangle support in Untamed, it make them constantly, every time they see a Fandangle, like, understand that if they don't kill them, they're going to lose. Like, <laughs> yeah, Fandangle's real, real good. Because you're going to take everything they got and put it in your pool. <laughs> I mean, she, that Fendangle is is the general witch rule. If if you see a witch, it's got to die. So and honestly, like if you have desire, so you can just start forging keys for fun. Like that's just insult to injury. But like the combo can get real, real gross. But it starts with envy and gluttony. Um, because all the sins are good. There is not a single sin that is bad. It's just how devastating are they as far as win con? And those two are a win con. Straight up, they can win games. Entirely on their own. Even without support, they could probably win some games. But with the right support, you're going to beat very good decks. Because they won't have much to do. <laughs> I will say, after playing Dis, and I have quite a few Dis decks that showed up in my boxes, it is a phenomenal house. I'm very happy to see it. 
yeah, I mean, they have a little bit of everything. Once again, that's always kind of been the disidentity. Yes, they do like certain things really well, but like this is always like tip their toes into a little bit of every other house as far as like mechanics go. Like they have capture, they have steel, they have damage, they have destruction, they have a little bit of everything. Um, in this set, again, especially with the sins, like kind of highlights this house does it all. Um, do I go back in against saying Logos is the best house in the set? I think I do. I I love how Logos plays, and I'm having a blast with it, but I haven't identified a win condition at a top level inside the house, and this does have that. Has anybody got any good Voltron decks? Dan, did you pull any? I, I did not pull a Voltron deck myself, but like both Nell and Drexgar in a transporter platform deck are both pretty good ways to possibly just make enough Amber to win a game. That sounds real fun. Yeah. I mean, like, all my decks have Nell, which is just draw, which is good, but not a win con, where Drexgar, he can just make so much Amber, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I uh, I unfortunately pulled a double transporter platform deck. Uh, with nobody that wants to be bounced. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, doesn't have anybody that wants to be bounced, and it legitimately has one upgrade in the entire deck, and it's in Sanctum. So I was like, ooh, double transporter platform, and now I'm digging into it deeper, and I'm like, oh, nobody wants to be bounced. There's not a single card in this deck that wants to be bounced, really. I mean, I guess I can always bounce to replay um, I, in the same house, but... You know, there's only a couple cards in there. Maybe like a subject, uh, subject Kirby, Kirby Sensor Chief really Garcia. Target. Yeah, I mean that's, but that's about it. There's there's nothing else that's like, hey, I really, really, I really, really want to bounce this, um, for any specific reason. Um, so that's kind of the bummer. There's only really two two targets, maybe in the house. But I mean, I can, I guess, I can always bounce to protect. If I need to, like, because it does have, like, a Faust, and it does have, a like, a Joya in there. So if they're getting low, I guess I can always bounce them to heal them and then replay them. I'm, I'm not sure. It's one of the decks that I actually really, really, really want to try. Um, just haven't. Unfortunately, I went on vacation as soon as MM came out, so didn't get to play. But I'm I'm very interested in in seeing it. I also pulled a four Grey Rider deck, so that was that's a thing nice. that exists. Um, it, it's a four gray rider deck, but nobody wants to fight. Everybody's they're all real small creatures. So. That's sad. Yeah, I was like, oh, a four gray rider deck. What else? And the, like, it's nothing. Um, anybody find any good angry mob stuff? No, I don't want to see angry Shut mob. Your mouth. No, take that as a no from the party. Jeez, like what? Angry yeah, weren't Mob. You playing an Angry Mob deck the other day? Well, sure, because it had, um, it was the best auto encoder deck I had open. So I was trying to play oh. an auto encoder Logos Reap thing, and it just happened to be that it had a real trashy file of uh, Angry Mobs. That like Angry Mob is such bad card, and Seeker of Truth is such a bad card that. Those two cards can just ruin Sanctum. But we're here to talk about good combos, not bad cards. Well, what other good combos have we found? I, I just uh, want to know. I saw you playing Angry Mob the other day. I'm like, was it any good? I didn't see how the game ended. So, No. Um, I've I had a little bit of luck so far with um, Dark Harbinger and Song, Song, of the, Song of the Wild. So you play that one. He readies. He reaps for two. And with a logo stack, so you can archive some stuff. I, I have a couple of decks where he can go for 12 to 14 Amber with just a few cards because there's multiple Song of the Wilds. And then the deck also has a Key Frog with the damage on it and other damage in that house. So it can fire keys on its own turn. Um, hmm. So there is there is definitely some burst potential in, in Untamed, it's kind of like it was with Coda, where it's you got to have a full hand of Untamed for it to burst for a lot. And I think the weak spot where this is versus Untamed is Untamed. It was all creatures, so between regrowths and Arises, you could do it again. 
where this it's action card based, so the ability to recycle it is back to draw dependent. Well, next week we'll be able to start playing it on Crucible uh, more reliably. So there That's is exciting. right now. Do they publicly release the test server? It, well, anybody can hey, play Jay. on it, right? I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't know if they publicly hey. released it yet or not. So, I mean, right now you can play with your um, your MM decks. Um, there are some. There's still obviously some buggy interactions because they're they're still working but it out. So, my understanding from what I read is that it is supposed to go live tomorrow, Friday, yes, uh, July seventeenth. So, I mean, it, we're we're looking at a very quick turnaround, which is amazing that the TCO team was able to do that. I mean, the number of bugs I encountered last night playing yeah. makes me. Worried about it being ready for Friday, but at the same time, it's it's functional. You just got to know the cards and be willing to do right. a little manual fixing. Yeah, right. which yeah. isn't which isn't a crazy. Yeah. crazy Turns idea. out the archivist doesn't work at all. Go figure. The yeah. archivist doesn't work at all. No, that's kind of well, complex. Pitch, yeah, picture yeah. how you're going to code that. That's not an easy. Uh, oh no, I I am I am sure it is not a simple one. It's one they're saving for the end. Um, but that was one of those cards I was looking forward to working with, but I've yet to find a archivist deck that really fires it yet. Yeah. That I can afford. Yeah. And then uh what some of the I I I opened a Dark Amber Vault deck. Okay. And Dark Amber Vault with Infomorphs is just so much draw. Like the one I got only has it has three infomorphs or something and a dark amber vault. So that right there, assuming you get your vault down, is nine extra draw, plus all the others. So the stack has eleven. It's got eleven mutants, and then three of them being infomorphs. So you're you're like seventeen extra draw, and then it's got a grim reminder. So you get to bring one of those houses back and do it all again. The draw potential in that deck is just is just as I mean, I was playing. 10 to 12 card hand most of the time with that deck. It's like playing Martian Generosity nonstop. It is silly. And then all the creatures are too big or too. Uh, the deck I was playing didn't have a way to really take advantage of it, but I, I think it's common enough to happen quite often. Um, I did have a deck, I was playing a deck that has three subject Kirby's and three Fandangles. Um, that creates for some really stupid <laughs> turn. <laughs> um, quite often. Uh, so I like like I said, that deck didn't actually have enough like teeth to do much with that idea. But because of Fandangle being, I think, common, subject Kirby is definitely common. Mm -hmm. That is a combo that I am gonna be looking for. Uh, yeah, fan Fandangle is common. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, it's definitely curious. common. So like I that is a situation where like your stuff is just to start to come in ready. You're going to get tons of value. They can't stop it because you're playing Fandangle on your Star Alliance turn. Um, and then if you factor transporter platforms in there, so like that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking like I that is a crazy powerful combo with a with an upside that is just ridiculous. If you talk about subject Kirby transport platform Fandangle, it it is very strong. Um, like I said, the the deck I was playing with didn't have like enough stuff in it to take advantage of exactly what was happening there, but that is a crazy combo that they can't do much about because as long as you have four amber or get to four amber deer in your turn, this stuff is just gonna like happen. Your Kirby's gonna come in, you're gonna play the other one, you're gonna transport your your Kirby, you're gonna play him again, and hey, look, he's ready. Oh, <laughs> <It's like, laughs> hey, look. Like it's. Mm, really I'm gonna roll a six my Kirby's. Yeah, yeah. Like, tr tr Transporter platform with Kirby was not fun to play against, Mister Sheep. Yeah, well. Like I thought the transporter was pretty broken with the other Kirby, and this one it. I it, think it, this it, Kirby it, it's is more ridiculous. Honestly, like it's. It's, it's three times good. as good as subject. I I like I like subject significantly more than I like, um, Tom Officer Kirby. Uh, I think it's closer than that, but mainly because of just certain combos that existed. Um, because like Hysteria, I think it's close. Uh, I think it is easier to get more value out of the subject Kirby. Um, for sure. 
I, I think you, there are fewer ifs that need to happen for subject Kirby to be good. There's a lot of things that need to be happen for com officer Kirby to be super good. Um, sub, subject Kirby is generically real good. I think the, the, the top end of it, I, I think you have to have stuff like Fandangle for it to be like, as broken as the other Kirby could get. I'm looking at my deck list. I kind of want to open my deck with my uh, enhanced Toad. Um, more chances than not, it's got a damage counter on it uh, because the deck has one capture, three damage. So I'm wondering, like, is it worth it to play Toad for the damage counter? And do you kill Toad? Is that the big? Is that the big brain? Big brain play just to kill Toad? Oh, what, it's got why would you kill Toad? I mean, it can always attack for one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Just because you hate him doesn't mean you I just murder him for no reason. Oh, I'm I'm just seeing in my head the, one of these double Dark Amber Vault decks, and it's going to have, like, triple red penny. So oh, the, p- the piece about the <laughs> Dark Amber... Right. The the double uh, d- uh, dark amber vaults that we've seen have really kept the mutants down. I hope yeah, they broke it into they... the algorithm because when we're seeing three four, it's fine. But man, with the ability to draw two cards plus four power, if you can increase that, that would be amazing. Another nice piece to be able to especially see. if it's like some of the more devastating mutants that actually yeah. do work once they're down. Like the, most of them are superfluous. Like once they're there, they've already done their effect and they're done. But they're our few mutants, like was it Plus Meyer, the one that makes your costs go up? Snorette. Like, yeah, uh, Professor Tarotu. Like, if you have those mutants and double dark Amber Vault, like that's then creating another insult entry game state on top of the value you've already gotten. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Has anybody had much luck with Citizen Shrix yet? <sighs> It depends if you're right there at check. If you know the one can make the difference, it's fine. Um, I, I haven't had amazing success with it, but it, it's you know it it helps at the at a time if you're right on the cusp. So a lot of people have been discussing um, what's the and I I don't like it the little three power elusive reap exalt get another amber guy. What's his name? From Exalt. Black get Bat. Another, get another Amber guy. Yeah, the Jarda. Quester Jarda. Oh, qu- yeah. okay. Uh. Okay, and they say it's almost a non-choice. You just always exalt it and get your extra Amber, right? That's that's what they're saying. I don't know if I fully agree with that. There's plenty of times where I wouldn't exalt my Jardas. Um, but a lot of people really do believe you just always exalt your Jarda because it's an Amber for you and they got to get yours. And plus, in Worlds Clyde, there's so many ways to protect it. In this one, this guy is even better, right? I reap, I get one, I exalt, and I take one of yours. I'm a, oh, every time, no question. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at I'm every Shrix time deck right now. I like tricks because of Curia and Ludo. If the deck doesn't have those two cards, it, it has is way less good. Yeah, the deck I'm looking at it has a Ludo, but it has no way of protecting Ludo. But he's still good as long as he's. So if you're in a space where you have to reap with him and you can't actually steal. He's not very good, right? Because you still have to exalt him and then steal zero. That's real bad, right? But you're still just talking about he's a reap two, but then you're kind of building a bank for him. But you're you're it's all gain for you. There's there's really no downside on that card. Well, the de- the deck also has double exile in it too, so I can just be like, well, I'll reap, take my one, and then put him on your side of the board too. I mean, Shrix isn't crazy power, you know. It's only three power. So it's not crazy. It's got Sanctum in it, so it's going to be able to take care of it. You know, uh, I I think Strix is super strong. I am always always happy to have that card. I think it's an average card without the support with Curia slash Ludo. One of the two. It's a very good. What's the one I was looking for? Because when I had it had triple Strix plus Brachus. So in my in my opinion, Brachus gets a huge bump in this set with both oh, yeah. Sanctum and Saurian being able to capture. Honestly, it, it, uh, uh, Brachus really gets a huge jump and has a lot of staying power. I think even better than Worlds Clyde. Well, yeah. the Ambers spread out more. Like a yeah. lot of times in World Collide, the Amber is always stacked in a single spawn. So. Thank you, Tribute. And disagree. I agree that he has more value uh, potential because there's more Amber on your cards all the time, especially if Sanctum is one of your houses. 
I disagree on the protection side um, because you don't have Imperium and you don't have either of your taunt dinosaurs. There's so much taunt, though, especially if he's paired with Sanctum. Yeah, that's fine. But like in the turn you play Brackus, because I play a Brackus deck quite a bit. Um, and it's, it's a little bit harder. Most often, because I do have Legionary and I do have Brutodon, without that turn where you're dumping your dinos, it is much harder to secure Brackus in this set than the previous one. Mm-hmm. Out of Dinosaurs. Because like you have um, the defensive, the one you can ward three. Yeah, um, but that I, I feel like it's not common. I haven't seen it that many. It's of them. it's a common. It's yeah, a defense, uh, defense initiative. Defense, 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 defense initiative. Yeah, there. defense initiative. Ward a creature. You may exalt this that creature if you exalt it. Ward each of its neighbors. Common. Yeah, yeah like I, I've only seen one in any of the decks that I played. Like that sucks. Maybe that's just yeah. a, a draw. Right? That's because we're uh, we're cursed with Sagittarius gaze. <laughs> three of them in yeah. every freaking deck I opened. I got more than one in a deck, but I do see it quite a bit. I, I did open... I, I don't but... know. Without the taunters, I, I think... I agree and disagree. I think I think its value in the end is going to be higher than it was in Worlds Collide because you just put so... I mean, so much amber on your cards all the time. Um, But you definitely need that ward thing or to already have a taunt creature in play. Yeah. Yeah, and you do have you do have it with uh, Grimlock. Uh, Grim should be coming back. Um, Grimlock as ducks. That's you should rare though. That's not the other rare. I, I, I understand, but you also you also have Cinder that's in um, Dis. You have Shadows with uh, Shoulder ID. You have Sanctum, which has there. You know, so there is a bit of taunt. It's just out of house, so you do have to leave kind of one side open to then place it next to it. Yeah, but that that is a quite a bit frustrating for me and i think that is actually one of the reasons why strix is a little bit more vulnerable now too because like i i mean every time i played strix decks in worlds collide it was always by a taunt right like it's always next to your legionnaire or your brood yeah. mm-hmm. like, like without Shrix, fail old tricks you saw get put into play a lot without getting exalted because they're like well this is just gonna die so mm-hmm. no point in doing that um yeah and you're right there is Definitely a lot less taunt in dinos. There's none, except for Grim Locus. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so none. That's yeah. a rare, and that's not yeah, a rare I want in my deck. I, I, I can't disagree with you. You're legitimately looking for either Dis there... or or Sanctum. Well, I mean, it goes back to what I said. I think Sor- the right Saurian and the right Sanctum is a legit top tier. This can win a vault combo. But you have to have a lot of the right cards, which is any top tier deck right now, what you need. Uh, but I I can't see like I really don't see Sorian paired with any other two houses that would make a uh vault deck. I guess I since you guys took some of those amazing combos already, I want to throw in a nice one that was uh, shown to me on Tuesday. Uh, Sheep with uh, ardent hero plus shoulder armor, not game changing, but man, is that annoying to deal with. Uh, so that's, that that's was a John, nice John yeah. that. I didn't even know where to talk about Arden here, but I definitely wanted to get him on the show today. Cause like that boy is a hero. Like I didn't understand how, like it looked good when I first saw it, but talk about but first, At first you hated it. Blood. Then we read the card and we found out it's real, real good. Well, first we hated it cause it was in Sanctum and we're like, Sanctum's bad. So we can just quit talking about this card. Yep. <laughs> it's so hard to deal with. Like, God dang it. So if someone had an opportunist on him against me, which gave him elusive on top of everything else. I was like, screw this car. <laughs> <laughs> he had a so, Joya next to him. I'm like, okay, oh, I know. cool. I so Joya, like Joya, Master of the Gray, and Quixelstone. I think I think there's some Quixelstone Master of the Gray if you can protect him somehow, like. You can't play creatures, and you can't play cards for Amber Pips? Oh, that sounds really good to me. I just don't know if it's resilient enough to pay dividends. I'm not sure, but should we go play some? Should we just go play? Hold, hold well, on one. Oh, we okay. haven't talked about Shadows at all. Though. Yeah, so I, I, I did have something there. So with Ardent Hero, just so we're very clear, it's four-power creature with Human Knight. It's got taunts. An ardent hero cannot be dealt damage by mutant creatures or creatures with power five or higher. 
And then going ahead and throwing that shoulder armor on, which we've seen reprinted, um, you know, it's going to go ahead and get plus two power and plus two armor if it's on a flank. And that's where it just becomes, okay, how how are you getting through this? Um, that, That was really, really painful to deal with. Since you guys asked for shadows, the other piece that I pulled out immediately with Terra, again, not game breaking, but just fun um, and super simple that you guys have already seen, is we're looking at either bow nithing or, um, where did I go ahead and lock him in? Bow nithing or subtle auto and then safe house. And it's yeah. great if you have safe house that's already out, super simple, nice little common piece. And it's like, oh, I have a uh, bone thing. I just stole one or two, depending on which key you're at. And then I'm going to put them back in for next time I call shadows. Oh, I just had you discard a card. Now I'll go ahead and put it back in to use next time. I, I, I love very simple, not game breaking, but fun. If I did have to redo the rankings, like if we redid that, I think shadows for me would be a lot lower than it was because mm-hmm. of how much combo top end stuff the other houses do. Yeah. Whereas I'm not feeling as much of that from Shadows. Yeah, the steel's there, but I feel like there's much larger swings in the other houses. Um, and I think uh, mass board wipes are critical, and most of the other houses do have at least something that does that. And Shadows, Shadows has not. got nothing. <laughs> like, Booby Dark, Trap's not enough. Dark Light Wave out. with the non mutants? Ugh. Like lights out, there's a whole bunch of stuff I don't want to return to their hand, considering like Nickel Eight could be a time traveler. Like <laughs> like like there's a lot of stuff in Shadows that used to be a lot better than it is. Um so yeah, like Shadows probably would be ranked lower for me. It might actually be the basement house. That's hard for me to say because Shadows is Shadows, right? You're stealing. Don't say that about my shadows. But, like, when it comes ah. down to it, like, Fandangle is way better than we originally thought it could be just yeah. because of what it can do to the other houses. Like, Fandangle alone means that Untamed cannot be in the bottom because it can win a game just because it's existing, especially with some ridiculous Star Alliance turns. And if they don't stop it and you have the sins, you could just win. Yeah. Uh, so like shadows might be the bottom house for me because like it does all the stuff that it does, and it really doesn't do anything else. Are we, are we saying steel is now too slow? I mean, no. like I think there is a scenario. <laughs> like I that said, I have seen a deck that did have three red pennies. I have no idea which enhancements they got, but all three red pennies had enhancements. Like like before we move on from shadows, we do have to say that borrow and red penny specifically are very real cards. Borrow scares me a lot with me wanting to play with my Dark Amber Vault decks. Because if you take my Dark yeah, Amber Vault, you, I just I just kind of want to quit. I'm like, good yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, like Borrow and Rad Penny. So like if you... And Shoulder It is way better than I originally thought it would be. Someone played that against me, and I was, that was actually giving me a really hard time. It shouldn't have. I really felt it shouldn't have been as big of a deal, but it was screwing me up real bad. Uh, maybe I was just misplaying or something, or I need to rethink what I was doing. Um, but like Borrow, Rad Penny, and Shoulderid can definitely build a really good Shadows house. That said, they still might be in the bottom because I don't actually think like the Rad Penny shenanigans is enough to like take out the combo stuff that I know can happen in the other. You'd house. have to thin your deck so hard to where you could cycle those red penny red pennies consistently. I mean, with three of them, that you can definitely do that. It really. No, does. I'm saying like. I think Rad Penny is to be competitive. You got to be playing all three of them every turn. Otherwise, but, you're just kind of not doing enough. But that's yeah. the whole piece is that as a Shadow's house, it's too many dead cards. It, it really is. So for me, after playing, yes, it went way, way down. Yeah. Like I think, like, I don't know what house I would put below it right now. So I guess that means it is in the bottom. I think of my Shadow's mind. is the most dependent house on what you get. Like, I got a Shadow's is, deck right is there. Now, there's a there lot any, of real bad untamed houses out there. There really are really bad. There are really bad no, untamed houses. Really bad. I'm thinking overall, though. I I've seen more untamed kind of come up and be better than a lot of shadows. 
No doubt there's bad. There's bad. I actually have there's real bad Dis houses. houses. There's real bad Saurian houses. Hell, I pulled a couple of real bad Logos houses. Like, I kind of thought that wasn't going to possibly. really bad. No, Logos. I think Logos is one of the highest potential support houses, but on average is bad. I've seen more Logos draws that I feel don't really accomplish Anything? much that I want. They than don't I move your. Yep. Right. Yeah, I think we all it's... wanted Logos to be better than it's. Well, no, because if you look at the list, like the potential is just wow. But then you start opening decks, and you're like, "Oh, look, I got two even Ivans and two odd Clods." I'm I'm okay with them. It's yeah, the but three freaking munchlings. Yeah, oh, I was just gonna munchling. say three munchlings or a couple three quick munchlings zones, and three opposition researches. I, I hate those. I don't mind bot booked in. Yeah, I, I, it's, I think it's good with bot. I hate crap, it. crap ass luck. Absolutely. Um, and I agree because I am not a fan of wild wormhole. Ooh, yeah, but my book is wild wormhole on a stick. I don't yep. like wild wormhole that much, so not a fan. I I wouldn't want it in my top end deck, but it's f- fun to play with. I mean, most I, of the, my top end decks, I rely on certain cards being there when I need them. I cannot afford in a lot of those decks to just randomly play a card off the top of my deck. Uh, well, then you also probably don't want to be in some of the star lines too, because th- that it is going ahead. You do have a bit of a chance to peek at some of the star lines, yeah. but the deck I was playing was it like Tuesday? Sur- you're talking about survey. Oh well, on uh, even outside of survey, I'm trying to think of who the creature was. Where oh, you and look- all of the aliens, the aliens. Yeah. yeah. So you wow. have. You oh, had that's... Scout Pete. I had Scout Pete's. I had uh, the demo alien that was there for the fight. Um, I, you're trying to do something with it, but back. you don't. It surveys the only one that forces the discard. There's another one that... at two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's I. I don't like survey that much either for the same reason. Uh, Trigon, Trigon is discard the, for reaping. Discard the top oh. card of your deck. Resolve oh, the card's really? bonus. So no, I mean, yeah. Trigon. Trigon's real bad. That card's bad. He's worse than Buttbook. <laughs> yeah, he is really bad. Well, I also had New Frontiers. At least he's not had, common. Yeah, I had New Frontiers. The un- I'm okay with New Frontier because I can control that. Like if I have a combo deck, I can. Yeah, and I you're know calling where, it where the house combo is. I'm just always choosing that house, and then there's a chance it puts the entire combo in my archive. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's definitely the call. So, I'm okay with that one. But, like, Bob Bookton and Lieutenant Commander Trigon, no. I don't want them. I really, really don't want I just, them. I really don't mind Bob Bookton. I just don't have a or ton me. of cards in this set. So, here, and, and maybe it's just my decks, like, but I don't have a lot of cards that I'm like, wipe. oh no. If Bob Bo- Bo- Bookton or Trigon hit your board wipe and you lose the game because you reaped that turn, that's yeah. real bad. Well, that's on you, like, though. That, I mean, that's totally on you. No, it's on the card, because the card sucks. Well, then don't call Logos and be reaping with Bob Bookton. No. What the hell are you doing? Or just don't buy a deck that has those cards in it. Well, I mean, nobody... <laughs> do you think some... I mean, I'm not saying anybody's going out there going to be like, man, dude, I need that quad Bob Bookton deck, bro. Oh, no, I mean, there are just... definitely... There's people who are buying quad Wild Wormhole because they think it's the best card in the game. Cordero will get five of anything if it's common. Well, sure. Well, that's that's part of his deal is he likes decks with fives. Yeah. So, <laughs> here's a card that I've not seen used enough that I thought was going to be better, and maybe it's because it's in Shadows, but Vandalize? I, I don't think I've seen a deck with more than one in it. I've had uh, uh, I have a deck know. I play with that had two I, in it. I don't there, know if I it or not. There are, there are six decks out there with four of them. And 250 with three of them. I, you know, that's just my luck. I have not opened any Vandalize, but I think I, right now, I, I, I think I, I have one with three. Uh, I got Vandalized when I was playing my Dark Amber deck, and I'm like, oh, if he hits my vault, I'm, I'm going to cry a little bit, and he didn't. So, like that card, you know, it's like it's like Bornet. It just makes you cringe if there is a important card so, in your deck. Bornet is way better, but yes. Oh, yeah. sure. Vandalize is is good. Like it's. I it's pulled a lot of shadows. I didn't get any vandalizes. Yeah, like no, I don't know. It's it's just not been around here. I I've feel not like the vandalized. only card I got in shadows was um well, weirdly enough, I mean I got a ton of opportunists. I got That's yeah, really I've seen weird. 
had a bunch of economists who make me real mad too. Economist, and then I got a quad yes. safe house deck. Quad safe house deck. That's interesting. If you have uh, four bonithings. <laughs> no, it doesn't have bonithings. It's got <laughs> play four bonithings. Yeah, like it has a it has a. It has a de- I mean, I guess it has a desolus. So I can always play him and then archive him, you know, if it's like early game, I guess. I mean, it's just See, like looking at the deck, there's that, like, dude. there's like, it's got double stealth stirs, double explo rovers. So it's like, okay, so those guys uh, are useless. Um, I, I hate the, the, the combo creatures, the, I'm an upgrade and I'm a creature. Yeah. They're, those just, they make me unhappy. Almost always. Maybe if you get the crazy Drexgard back, it'll work fine. But without that, even with Nell, like I don't want to play him as upgrades. I don't. I don't really want to play him at all. I hate those cards. I don't want them. The Taunt one is okay because Taunt is good. Taunt, taunt's good. Period. Yeah. The elusive one in the right situation can give some effect, but the skirmish one makes me mad. I hate Explorer Rover. Well, I, I saved you guys because I pulled quite a few of the Shadows decks. Out of the 27 I've imported so far, 17 had Shadows. I pulled a couple triple Shoulder Ids and triple Seeker Needles. That's what I seem to be all over lately. So, eh. I, mean, I have a triple Shoulder Id, triple Red Benny deck. It's kind of neat. I pulled neat. nine. It doesn't kill anything, though. The problem with the Shoulder yeah. Ids is they don't do damage, so you don't hold board. I mean, like, Correct. you steal one. Okay. I mean, but when they then are just like, well, now I have seven or eight stupid Sanctum creatures out here, and I'm just going to reap it out and never fight those guys. And you're like, yeah, my my shoulders aren't really doing anything for me. The last con- the last piece I wanted to put out that uh, I had that I've seen for pretty good effect is Cleansing Wave plus Dark Minion. So Dark Minion out, boom, you hit it. It does a damage, and then you throw down the Cleansing Wave. It's a fun little piece for a nice little Amber Burst. Um, yeah. I've enjoyed that one quite a bit. That also works with the leader if you happen to have them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's uh, let's wrap this up with: Did we get any interesting uh, legacies or mavericks? Anybody? This could be a complete like no, and we just end. But what? Are, uh, Jr. You opened one of mine that had a decent one in it. Now you need me to remember that. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I had to remember. It was a, It was just a maverick. But it was a playable Maverick, at least. I got... My legacies were all terrible. Uh, well, I guess Draining Touch isn't the worst legacy to get. Maybe it is in this set, because a lot of creatures are just having Ember on them now. But I got a Jarda for no reason. Um, and a Golden Spiral. I thought the Golden Spiral was interesting, but I can't make use of it, so... It made me a sad Wookiee. Anybody else? Any interesting Mavericks? Anything like that? I got a Hideaway Hole, too, if, you know, that awesome card, if anybody <laughs> wanted it. Oh, I got a Galea Tops and Shadows. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I, I had a Defense Initiative in Logos, so nothing super exciting. I want to just so get, I want a Fandangle without Untamed. Yeah. Uh, I got a Stirring Grave in Logos. So that, you know, Stirring Grave is fine. So that, that card's fine anywhere. Have you tried looking it up yet? Are there any decks that even exist that, with that option, Z? Yes, yes. You can get a deck okay. with Fandangle and no end. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> All right, so I like this isn't a good thing, but I did see this in one of the decks I was testing because you get 430 decks that I analyzed, and then we're playing with 50 of them. There is a deck here. It got, in Shadows, it got Legacy J. Vinda, but then got maverick into Star Alliance with Exchange Officer. Ooh. Yep, I've seen I've seen one of those too. So yeah, it got a legacy card and then got moved due to Exchange Officer. That was pretty cool. Again, Javind is not the one that I would want. Um, but it was neat. Give me Shadow Self. It's like Shadow Self in Star Alliance. I Give have seen Al Jericho. That would be great. Some kind of cool um work with Star Alliance and Sanctum because of Grey Rider going into Chan, going into something else and that kind of stuff. Like there's definitely some crazy cross house cheating that can happen with, with Grey Rider and some of the other cards that exist. 
I was playing that. That was fun. Yep. Yeah. And then what I was I'm expecting to see one that's gonna be real obnoxious is a decent snudge inferno stack. Yep. Oh I I opened one, but it isn't good enough to do anything. We, I, I, oh, I know I we want to end it here. Have both those cards. Oh. I, I have a Snudge Double <laughs> Inferno deck, which is pretty nasty. Um, yeah, that that could definitely. And then, like, if you had the. <laughs> and uh, it has Eaton's Jar, <laughs> which just kind of makes it. I haven't gotten to test oh, it yet, good. but it, it looks good. But the Shadows might be the ass dragger of the bunch. It's just the so Shadows are real it. not good. Pur- purge your own and get down to two. Yeah, that, I mean, it's it's can I do it to get it yeah. that you know what I mean to I mean it's got uh what a bonert venom, two opportunists, a sting for no particular reason. Um, I mean at least it's got a mug, imperial traitor. I mean it's just it's not. That's the shadows we're talking about. Too many dead cards. Yeah, it's it's. I all, feel like all sting is cards. real bad in general in this set. There's not There's a lot to of do with it. Pick up to, yeah. It's, you don't even have the bad shadows key cheats. So right. So what? I mean, what? What do I do with it? Well, you, I, you, I don't have enough. You, you, you can asked, destroy it on your on tame turn. Yeah, you asked earlier. Frog? You asked earlier, Wookie, what was missing, and outside of key frog, they're just oh, aren't the same the key, key cheats. Are be bad. Aware. Yep. Yeah. Like yeah. so, legacy when the legacy Choda shows up, like in the right deck, that that might make a difference. Might not, but it it might make a difference. Yeah, we'll see. yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to find any way. I mean, the deck's actually rated decently high, but it's like, man, is the shadows is the shadows going to be the one that makes this deck kind of unplayable? Because it it almost feels like it is. Because there's just, I mean, even in the other deck I got, I I feel like in almost every shadows deck I got of the sting, and it's like, no, I don't want this card. Take it back. Give me a new one. Like, there's no way to make the sting good. I have n- zero opportunities to making the sting good, so I just discard it on my turn. It's just a dead card. I have so no, I, no way of getting it out, no way of archiving it, no way of just discarding it. It's just like, ugh. I have some other dream in my head with Essence Scale and then an Amber or a, a Well Enhanced Relentless Creeper with, like, your Snudge. Mm-hmm. And then you can just. Yeah, go kind of bananas there. I haven't seen any of those. I mean, I haven't played any of those either. But I was oh, like, Ooh, I don't know. If we, furnace. I don't know if we talked about it, but Relentless Creeper plus Essence Scale is just yeah, cool. it's super busted. good, super <laughs> busted. Especially if you could somehow get Lord Invidious in that deck, because you're just gonna win. <laughs> well, how about Essence Scale in general? It just seems yeah, Essence Scale in general is good. one of the yeah, card. we weren't sure about that card, but it is definitely. And then, and like, if you have Essence Scale and your deck is also using Rad Pennies or QMAX, you get to go off house and get those guys where you want them and hopefully get yep. you kill use them out off, of them. Off cycle. Yeah, like it's great. Like, Essence Scale is a good card. It's another one of those cards. And, if it gets borrowed, you're going to cry. Um, yeah. Like, real and, bad. <laughs> yeah, because they don't even have to have disc to use it, right? Because it's yeah, not an action. Shadows. Now let me yeah, ask yeah. the big, 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 big. Oh, it's question. Essence scale action. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Did we get a FAQ yet? Mm, I've been yeah. gone a few days. That's why I'm asking. We got it last week, right? Yeah. Oh, the rules well, were up. They yes, they've they released Chinese. the update. Well, they've released an updated rule set. It has. It FAQ. does not have the Chinese FAQs in it, though. Oh. Not all of them. I was gonna say because the last one I saw was the Chinese one. And yeah, obviously you can you can translate it because you and I ran into a big problem with Mark this on on how that actually operates. Yeah, I'm not. I I swear it was in the Chinese FAQ that there was something about Mark this, but I could be confused and I haven't ever gone mm-hmm. back to look at it because I'm kind of lazy. Yeah, because I had a way of Mark dissing and then killing the creature. So it's like, does it have to make it till end of turn, or when does this have to um, end? But. Yeah, the mark of dis is still a question. It was used, and then the board clear. Thanks, sheep. <laughs> um, and that can be a nice little soft lockout. We'll yeah, see. So, all right, guys, I think we're gonna pack it in here. Um, thanks to everybody for coming out and listening again. Thanks to you guys for putting in the hard work because I decided to go on vacation of actually going out and playing some games. So, 
thank you guys for doing doing your bit. Guys, don't forget the dailies are going on every single day. Um, and not only on top of that, we got a special surprise for Thursdays. So you're just going to have to join the Discord for it. I'm not going to give it away what it is here. Um, so join the Discord and you can find out what happens on Thursdays um, over there. And we'll have some fun. Any last words, guys? Let's make it brief and uh, get out of here. We're over our hour mark again. Play some mass mutations. It's fun. Yay. Yeah. JR. Have fun. Stay safe, key forgers. Dan. Come play the dailies. All right. We'll see you guys next week. 